you might think you know what the world looks like, right? But what if you were to realise that what the world actually looks like is drastically different than what you had previously thought? Would that be strange? From a very young age we are presented with a rectangular map of the earth that we are generally not taught to question. But if we suppose that we live on a globe, then a rectangular representation just doesn't make sense, does it? Let me show you why. If we suppose that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, then it is much flatter at the poles and much wider at the equator. Therefore, the size of countries found towards the polar regions are overrepresented, and the size of countries found towards the equatorial regions are underrepresented. Whereas on a rectangular map, all of the land masses are presumed to have an equivalent size regardless of their location at the relatively smaller poles or at the relatively larger equator. So in reality, the countries at the equator are much bigger than they seem, and the countries at the poles are much smaller than they seem. Let's start by looking at Russia. Look at Russia in comparison to India. Russia is generally assumed to be huge, but when you pull it down to the equator, it shrinks significantly. While India is seen as quite large, but when you pull it up to the North Pole, you realize that it is actually huge as you can see here. Notice the relative sizes of India in the north, whilst Russia is at the equator. Let's pull them back together. Russia is still much bigger, but you realize that in fact, it is not so much bigger than India. Now let's look at another one. Let's go to Greenland. Many people think of Greenland as a big place, around the same size or even larger than Brazil. But it is actually a great deal smaller than Brazil, and Brazil is also far larger than it is often assumed. Let me show you here. In fact, Brazil is much larger than Greenland. Let's move them back up north, shall we? As you can see, at the North Pole, Brazil is in fact enormous. Whilst at the equator, Greenland is tiny. Now for the USA in comparison to Congo. The USA is still big, but it is not quite as epic as you might have thought, whereas the underrepresented equatorial Congo becomes gigantic when shifted up to the polar regions. Now, Imagine how much natural resources Congo has now that it has been enlarged several times. There are far more hidden gems in Congo than you may have previously thought. Interesting, right? As for Canada, It seems huge here, 
but it is actually a great deal smaller than you may have previously imagined. It is not so mighty after all. Now at last for Antarctica. Can you see how colossal this continent is? Once you move it up to the equator, it is absolutely huge. Let's compare it up next to Canada. Absolutely gigantic. It covers all of Europe and more. Now let's look at Iran. It is actually pretty big. That's why the USA is so scared of Iran's future potential. Iran has a lot of resources too. In general, the countries found within the upper northern hemisphere, such as Russia, Greenland, Iceland, Canada, the United States, and Europe, have a huge size bias. Canada, Greenland, and Russia are shown as far larger than they actually are, whilst equatorial and southern hemisphere countries like Congo and Brazil are shown as much smaller than they really are. Antarctica is an example of a large landmass that deserves to be shown as even larger than it is currently shown. It doesn't help that school maps, such as this one, have misleading pictures and diagrams either. Take a look at this typical school map for children and observe these mountains and polar bear in Greenland. We already know that Greenland isn't even close to the size that is shown as on this school map. And to make things even worse, these mountains are given more of a mention than the Himalayas or the Andes, which doesn't make much sense at all, does it? There may be some mountains in Greenland, but they are certainly massively overrepresented here. In the least conspiratorial way, the more economically developed countries, such as the USA, Canada, and Northern Europe, have been enlarged, as has Russia. But when you look a little deeper, the less economically developed and more resource-rich countries, such as Congo and India, have been made to look smaller. Is this a coincidence? It is strange that the institutions that make these maps are from the developed sections of the world, and they are conveniently located in the sections of the Earth that have been made larger. Whilst resource-rich tropical nations like Congo and India that traditionally have been and still are exploited by the developed areas of the world have been made deceptively smaller, as if to attempt to psychologically reduce their significance to the average child gazing upon this rectangular map for the first time. Most children are not taught to question this model of a map either. In conclusion, the world looks very different to how it is portrayed in the standard Mercator projection map. If the Earth is a globe, or an oblate spheroid, then this rectangular representation is not accurate. Thank you for listening, and good night.